Now, if you're in the market for a luxury sedan and you're an enthusiast, you would definitely check out a 5 Series. However, if you're going to be doing long tours and spending hours and hours inside the cabin, sometimes, just sometimes, the fiver just doesn't seem to cut it. You see, BMW compromised a little bit on the comfort side just to get that sheer driving pleasure. But what if you are going to be sitting behind for a long time and what if you want to cover a lot of Ks on the Odo? Well, BMW has got you covered for that. This is a BMW 6 Series Gran Turismo. And what better way than putting the Gran Turismo through its paces by going on a grand tour? So we are on our way to Alibag and I'm going to tell you guys all about this new 630D M Sport. So the GT formula for BMW has evolved into a long wheelbase, comfy suspension, uh, chillax inside out luxury type of car. And an Eco Pro, you can even whisper, it's super quiet inside and if you're on a tarmac road like this one, you will not have any form of hindrance or noise while driving. In fact, while we were uh, driving on the expressway, the concrete patches were quite loud and you could hear road noise and tire uh, droning but on a tarmac road it is so quiet it is so quiet that you can just have a normal conversation and everyone in the car can hear you uh, apart from that the interior is beautiful it is pretty much a 5 series but now you have the OS 7 uh, user interface which is super smooth you also get a 12.7 inch screen in front of you which is very nice and uh, some hard touch woods and leather everywhere which is very comfortable the air suspension also helps in that luxurious ride because it just sucks bumps over and you can just go through anything like a cloud it's uh, very nice if the road gets a bit too bumpy you can lift your suspension up and just like now lift it a little bit on the fly 10 kilometers and you get to cross quite a lot of good stuff. Now when you need to get somewhere in a rush, the 6 series engine does definitely deliver, especially the 630D. It has around 260 odd bhp and 620 newton meters of torque. Concentrate on that, 620 newton meters of torque. It is delivered to you with a bucket. So it is just dumped on you. Whenever you put your foot down on sport, your head is going onto the backrest and there is no two ways about it. The, the, the way the turbo just spools is amazing. You just put your foot down and I'm pretty sure that camera is going to move. Woo! And you will be seeing yourself doing ludicrous speeds really fast and you will not realize it because this car is awfully quiet even on sport. But that's what it's meant to do, right? It's a grand tourer. Now, this is an M Sport car and to put an M badge on a car without being corny or it coming from factory is high praise but lately that badge has been taken quite lightly even by BMW. So my question is how does the BMW 6 Series GT 3630D M Sport handle when you have to actually chuck it down a corner. So chucking the car into a corner and hoping for the best doesn't usually work in this car because the amounts of grip are there moderately. However, the body roll and the understeer is something that you really need to take care of. The car's suspension is not sprung for this. So when you actually chuck it into a corner, the chassis does undulate quite a lot and I'm quite happy that these bolsters are there to hold me in place at least. Apart from that, the engine does deliver very well, but the chassis and the way it is set up, it is de definitely not meant to corner. However, if you want to do some tomfoolery, put the traction control off and put it in sport and the gearbox in sport. And I'm glad to report that it's very easy to slide. The amount of torque that it has, it just womps it on top of you and you can just basically light up the tires very easily at slow speeds with the traction control off. Not that I uh, 
not that i advise you to do it on public roads but it is possible that's all i'm saying slowly the highway turned into a two lane road and this massive behemoth was basically covering up the whole lane but that isn't to worry about because the visibility and sensors keep you in check and make sure you don't ram into the back of a tractor soon we entered ali bag and i was looking for some lunch so we pulled into a quaint little restaurant to stop for a bite okay so we've taken a break not because i'm tired uh, it's because i am starving so we have taken a little break for lunch and i think it's the best time to talk about design right now you see the bmw 6 series is pretty much a 5 series for 3/4 of its body but the last third is where the magic happens the last third is where the bmw 6 series does show itself uh in the rear you have a huge boot which holds around 610 liters which is more than enough for your clubs to go to the golf course and it's got a low lip that means you can lift heavy loads and put your grocery in nice and easy The GT line of cars from BMW haven't been the prettiest over the years. The first GT, the 5 series GT, well, there's no nice way to put it, was a fat ugly pig. The 3 series GT was a big improvement in that formula and now BMW has come out with the 6 GT. The pre-facelift car was decent, but this new one with the new style of headlights and tail lights, the M Sport body kit just looks the part. The rims are also absolutely gorgeous and well, I'm kind of a purist I would say I like either sedans or wagons and this is something in the middle and somehow BMW has made it work the proportions of the vehicle are great and when the car is going down the road it has loads of road presence and oh yeah it has this cool little feature where a small little spoiler pops out on the touch of a button I eat more than I had to Okay so not only does the souping roof line give you more headroom you also get more legroom thanks to a 95 mm longer wheel base your seats recline too and you get a beautiful navigation screen that goes through all of the settings of the car vehicle vehicle info uh the me, uh, phone media everything but as hard as the uh 6 series flexes its biceps it's not as big or even bigger than the e class it is quite nice reclining seats but they don't recline as much as the e class and you don't even get the option of heated or cooled seats but we're getting late and i forgot that i don't have a driver so time to get back in the driver seat but let's be honest we indians are quite vertically challenged so these small little nitpicks here and there aren't really going to hamper your decision The fact of the matter is that the 6 series GT lives up to the badge. It has a very pleasant ride, loads of space, much more than an E-Class as a whole, and a 3-liter inline 6 that can entertain you when you want it and give you a smooth ride when you don't. The 6 series GT may not be a traditional grand tourer in the sense with two doors, looks that make you weak in the knees and a giant V8 or V12, but it sure does the job well. and more importantly it is crammed with tech and can seat four people in the lap of luxury that's a trip done The 6 series is not short of impressive at all. Definitely I am impressed with its beautiful looks, amazing amazing power which in fact is super talky and I have absolutely fallen in love with it and its effortlessness throughout the entire trip. I have definitely fallen in love with it and in fact I would prefer it over a 5 series and an E class. However, the best thing about Grand Tourers is that it leaves you with energy. enough energy to do the cool things in life like going having fun in the beach and spending time where it actually matters okay bye bye yeah!